All right, you guys. Today we have a Synology Disk Station DS920 Plus. We're gonna be taking it out of the box. We got three two terabyte red drives, and we have a, an external five terabyte drive. And what we're gonna be using this external drive for is to plug into the back of this, so then we can run backup. So if you know two of these drives fail, you know we still have an external drive to do those external backups. All right, we got everything out of the box. We have our drives, and we're gonna go ahead and take these three out, and we're gonna load our drives up. All right, we got our external drive plugged in, we got our power and ethernet plugged in that you can see back here. We have the USB plugged in for the external. We have dual uh, ethernet cables plugged in, so we can do some bonding with that and load balancing, and then we have our power cord plugged in. We have uh, our three drives, now loading those up into there. Right. And we have them all locked in now. We're going to go ahead and power it up. And while this is powering up, we're going to wait for this to turn all green and we should hear a beeping noise. And that's when we know we can go ahead and open up the Synology Assistant app and try to find the Synology on the lane and get the disk station and the array and everything built. All right, once you have the Synology powered up and you heard the beep, then now you can use the Synology Assistant wizard and search the network for that Synology and you can see it came right up. And the reason why it shows up too is because we have both um, cables plugged into the networking port. If you only plugged one in, you're obviously only gonna get one. So in my situation, I have two. So you can click on either IP I just clicked on the dot three eight uh, one three eight. Go ahead and click on the setup button. Go ahead and hit install now, and understand that you're going to be wiping those three drives that are in your Synology. Now keep in mind what is doing right now in the background is formatting two of those drives and installing the disk station manager software on them. Um, so this is different. Um, once you get into the disk manager station, you can set up the RAID in the array uh, for your data drive so then you can create the shares. So we're gonna go ahead and pause this right here and wait for this to get done and then we'll pick up when it gets done. All right, once you get to this page, go ahead and put in the uh, NAS name. I'm just gonna call it Synology NAS. And then you wanna create your username here. So we'll go ahead and put in your details, hit next. Now your Synology now should have rebooted and we're going to go ahead and skip this step but you can uh, fill out this information and we're not going to share our information with Synology so I hit go. Got it. No thanks. All right. So now once you're in the admin section here, we're going to go to our storage manager. We're going to go to volume, hit create. We're going to hit quick because we want to do the SHR volume because uh, this it's SHR volume is just like RAID 5. And if you know what RAID 5 is, you can have up to one drive failed if you have three or more drives. If you only have one, if you only have two drives, you can only do RAID 1 or RAID 0 when RAID 1 is being one fault drive, RAID, which is mirroring for those two drives. RAID 0 is faster performance, but you have no um, redundancy. So if you have one drive fail, you lose the whole array and you lose all your data. So I strongly recommend doing an SHR volume RAID, um, which is your default. And like I said, that is like a RAID 5. Um, SHR-2 is like RAID 6. So you can have up to two drives fail. And I think you need at least four drives for that one. But we're just going to do the standard SHR array. We're going to select all three drives. Oh, sorry, I hit cancel on that. And hit next, hit OK, that's fine, apply, close those sins out. And then while this is creating the volume, we can go ahead and create the storage pool. Once it gets done, you can see it's creating that. And this could take some time depending on how, how many drives you have and the size of the terabytes. And we can go, that's verifying the background. But now we can go ahead and go to the file station. We're going to go in and create our new shares. So I'm just going to call this one uh, shared. 
and we're selecting our volume. You want to enable the recycling bin and then restrict access to administrators only. So in case if you have a user in there that deletes all the folders, um, yeah, at least the administrator can quickly go in there and, and you know um, restore all those files. So we hit next. We don't want to encrypt it. Apply. Done. And then here you can give access to whoever you want user-wise. So now onto the fun part. We're going to go to our package center and go to these terms of service. And we're going to install, first let's update the search while we're in here. Go back to all packages and we're going to switch to backups. And you want to do the hyper backup app. So go ahead and install that. And what the hyper backup is gonna allow us to do is to create local backups of all of our Synology data. So if you guys remember earlier in this video, we plugged in that five terabyte external hard drive to this uh, Synology NAS. And now we're installing the app hyper backup and we're gonna configure this to do our backup. So let's say we have a drive fail and then a second drive fail on our Synology NAS. And then if we lose all of our data, well, that's why you wanna have a second backup running so in case that does happen, um, worst case scenario, you can still restore from that. So that is done. Our search is updated. Click on Hyper Backup. Going to remove that shortcut. Add Hyper Backup to our desktop. So we're going to go to Local, Folder, and USB because we're going to select that USB share. So because we're selecting our destination, so hit next. We're going to select our shared volume. And we're not going to back up any of our settings because we don't really have much settings there. Local storage one. And we're going to do daily backups and run them at yeah, 2 a.m. is probably good for us. Hit next. You want to enable the backup rotation so it recycles. And we're going to keep that at the default. 256 is fine. Hit apply. And hit no, we're not going to back up now. But now at 2 a.m. the next day, um, it'll start the backups to that local external drive. So any data that gets stored in the shared drive here will also be on the Synology and backed up to that external USB drive. All right, so once we have uh, the backups all done, we're going to go to Control Panel. And we're going to go to Network. And we're going to do uh, create a bond with those two interfaces, so it's kind of low balancing. So if one gets disconnected or the other gets disconnected, um, you know, we'll uh, have redundancy there. And it'll help with the load of bandwidth. So you want to do uh, create bond, adaptive load balancing, select both interfaces. And usually you're going to do a static environment, but this is going to be set up for a client. So we're just gonna, I'm just going to do DHCP for right now. Hit yes and save and it's going to just basically bond those two network interfaces together so it's going to be one IP address to be able to reach this thing. You're all done with the networking part. So you guys have it, how to set up your Synology uh, 4 bay with an external hard drive to do backups.